Hello everyone, Sebastian Lacido here and welcome to Headlines of Prophecy. Today we're going to look at the nations that oppose Antichrist. We're seeing an alignment of those nations today. Uh, we've had in past blogs, we've talked about the Saudi Peninsula. I want to talk about it again, but I want to show you in scripture today. First of all, uh, understand that just as there's Christians in every nation on the face of the earth that are true believers, Antichrist will have those that will be followers of his in every nation on the face of the earth. The Bible says that the world will marvel at him. The world will uh, pursue him and, and join him. And he'll have worshipers in every nation. But there are nations that will oppose him. Um, and if we look in Daniel chapter 11, Daniel chapter 11 has a parallel between uh, 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 Antiochus Epiphanes, which was a type of the Antichrist, uh, which happened about a hundred years before Jesus. Uh, it's a prophecy, but it happened a hundred years before Jesus was on the earth. So about a hundred BC. Uh, it's called the Maccabean Revolt. But but there's there's scripture here about the Antichrist. So I want to look at Daniel 11 and verse 40, and it says, "At that time, at the time of the end, uh, which is the end of the end, the king of the south shall attack him." And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and horsemen, with many ships, and he shall enter the countries, overwhelm them, and pass through them. He shall also enter the glorious land, that's Israel, and many countries shall be overthrown, but those shall not escape from his hands. Edom, Moab, the prominent people of Ammon, he shall stretch out his hand against the countries in the land of Egypt, shall not escape. He shall have power over the treasury of gold and silver and over every precious thing of Egypt. Also the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall follow him at his heels. But news from the east and the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go out with a great fury and destroy and annihilate many. He shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas and the glorious mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and no one will help him. Amen. <clears throat> and so we see here um, that there's nations that come against him. There's nations that escape. There's nations that don't escape. And there's nations that trouble him. So first of all, let's go back and let's look at verse 41. It says, And he shall enter the glorious land, that's Israel, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape his hand. Edom Moab and the prominent people of Ammon. Now those nations in ancient times line up with uh, Jordan, or the, you know, Jordan and the Saudi Peninsula. When you look at the Saudi Peninsula, it's made up of Saudi Arabia, Jordan, United Arab Emirates, Yemen, Kuwait, Bahrain, and Oman. So those are the nations that make up the peninsula. These same nations actually uh, our participants against uh, Russia, Iran, and Turkey in the Ezekiel 38 war, which precedes the tribulation period. So uh, it, it's my thought that these nations, again, act as a coalition. So the Bible says that they escape out of his hand. In other words, they stand firm and there's opposition to him. He doesn't control the entire earth. Um, he won't, and, and there'll be several pockets of opposition. This, this is one uh, area, the Saudi Peninsula, which really is on the other side of the Jordan Valley. So when you look at Israel, it's on the other side of the Jordan Valley and the whole peninsula. Uh, but it then goes on to say in verse 42 that Egypt will not escape. In other words, Egypt will push against him, but they won't escape. And so... Uh, I believe when I look at this and I look at a map and I understand what we did with Desert Storm and Desert Shield, I believe that, that the opposition nations will probably use the Saudi Peninsula to come against him. And, and so uh, we're starting to see this. President Bush uh, and Jared Kushner and a lawyer friend of, of, uh, of uh, President Trump all sort of worked in tandem to make these normalization deals. And we talked about this in previous shows <coughs> where uh, uh, I believe Bahrain, Oman, and the United Arab Emirates all signed normalization agreements, which are, which are complete normalization of relationship. 
So that means travel can go back and forth, education, healthcare, uh, the ability to share technologies. Uh, you know, so, so three of those nations have signed normalization agreements. Jordan and um, uh, Egypt and Saudi Arabia all have uh, a, well, Egypt and Jordan have a, a peace agreement, which, which is, is being converted into a normalization agreement. And Saudi Arabia and Oman are working on these agreements. So President Trump started the ball rolling. I don't think, even though we're still praying for him and, and we'll see where all the cards fall, even though uh, Joe Biden becomes president, I don't think it's going to stop, it may not stop uh, this movement toward normalization because not only is normalization in the best interest of those nations in that they're more secular in nature, not orthodox, but also there's a common enemy to all of them, and that's Iran, and that's uh, uh, Turkey, which wants to go back to the old caliphate, and it's, sort of, it's a Shia structure versus a, a Sunni structure. And so uh, these nations, I think, carry on into being in opposition to Antichrist. <clears throat> so we're, again, the Saudi Peninsula has Saudi Arabia, Jordan, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Oman, uh, Kuwait, uh, and Yemen, uh, and then Egypt. And so those nations are all normalizing or have peace agreements. They're more secular in nature. Uh, they're not as, as, as fundamental. And so uh, in the scripture here, we see that. Uh, so we can see that. It's not hard for us sitting here today. If, if the time is as short as I think it is, that, that these nations over the next decades will continue to entrench themselves with Israel and with Western thinking. Uh, when you come down, the more interesting thing here, when you come down to verse 40, 44, it says, But news from the east and the north shall trouble him. Therefore, he shall go out with a great fury to destroy and annihilate many. He shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain, yet he, shall, his, yet, yet he shall come to his end and no one will help him. And this is speaking of him actually making his kingdom in Jerusalem. His palace, his leadership will be in Jerusalem. Uh, when the Bible talks about Babylon, and I taught this last Saturday on the harlot of Babylon, the mother of Babylon, but when he talks about Babylon as a physical area, uh, it, there's two Babylons. One is uh, economic, and I mean, today, if you had to pick a, a city that sort of lines up with it, uh, New York or Hong Kong or London, it has to be a tremendously uh, wealthy city that, that uh, touches global wealth around the world. And so right now, sitting here today, New York would be that, that place, that seat, as far as the end times. I think as far as where we're at now, as far as global influence in this new uh, antichrist spirit that's going across the land. Right now, I think it's San Francisco because it started there, uh, you know, uh, decades ago. And the influence of San Francisco today in the U.S., uh, when you look at where are the leaders that are driving this agenda, this, this, uh, this uh, anti-Bible agenda, this agenda which legalizes and legitimizes sin, it's really coming out of California and out of San Francisco. But when you look at the scripture uh, concerning the Babylon that's destroyed because of commerce and because it fed the merchants of the world, uh, I, I really think that's New York and, and you know, possibly the UN there. Uh, so, but there's a second city, uh, which we know is, is spiritual Babylon, which is uh, where Antichrist will be in uh, his final three and a half years, which is Jerusalem. Uh, the Bible actually says, calls Jerusalem Babylon. And so I, I think that there's a, there's a migration between the two. Uh, but the trouble out of the east is what we want to look at today. And if you go with me to Revelation chapter 9, Revelation chapter 9, in verse 13, it says, Then the sixth angel sounded. This is the sixth angel that had this uh, of the seven trumpets. Uh, he has the, the sixth trumpet. 
So he sounds his horn. Verse 14 says, And the sixth angel who had a trumpet released four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So four angels are released when he sounds his trumpet. So for the fourth angel who had been prepared for an hour, a day, a month, and a year. So a little over 13 months were released to kill a third of mankind. So you picture John is seeing this. A seventh angel sounds. He sees a vision, an open vision, which means he's alert and awake. <clears throat> and he's seen a 3D movie that God's showing him. And in this 3D movie, he sounds a trumpet. And that trumpet releases four angels. And they have a mission for an hour, a day, a month, and a year. So about a little over 13 months. They're released and they kill their, their mission and their ability given by, by, uh, by God and by Satan is to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million and I heard the number of them and thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of, of fiery red and, uh, and blue and sulfur yellow. I mean this speaks of China. We're talking about China here. Their heads were like the heads of a lion. There were helmets and smoke and fire and brimstone. And by these three, a third of mankind is killed by fire and by smoke, by brimstone, uh, which came from them. For their power is, uh, and it goes on. And it said the rest of mankind uh, were not killed. And so we see here, I, and I, I want you to see, you can almost see this all lining up now where you know, not only the Saudi Peninsula and uh, is getting into place, um, and we see the, uh, but China, we see that China is the only, there's only two countries on the face of the earth that can man a 200 million man army for a ground assault, because this, this, this is a ground assault. This is like, it's like locusts. When, if you read through the scripture, you would see that fire comes from it, it, their mouth and, and, and so John's seeing this in a vision and see, seeing this great army using fire and brimstone. We, we look at it and we see bombs and, and, and a ground assault. But this 200 million man army, there's only two nations on the face of the earth that can man that army. And, and one is uh, India, which I, I don't believe it is. And two is China. And it gives us the color. So John's looking at them and he sees the color of red and yellow and, and the sulfur color of yellow. And so they begin to, to, they're in the east now. So going back to Daniel, it says trouble will plague him out of the east at the end. And so China will begin to move on a ground assault, moving all the way for a little over 13 months until they get to uh, Israel, the land of Israel. So it won't be, it'll be a conventional war. They will, uh, they will uh, suit up 200 million people in an army and they will move like locusts and just invade and take over armies very similar uh, to what Adolf Hitler did and we see that in the valley of Megiddo <coughs> which is Armageddon which is a huge valley in northern uh, Israel when you look at Israel the northern part of Israel was very very cosmopolitan because the Romans the Greeks the Persians uh, the Iraqis, the Mesopotamians, the Assyrians had to come through Israel. So they would come in to the Megiddo Valley and travel down the, uh, uh, the west coast uh, of, uh, of Israel along the border of the sea to get to northern Africa and to uh, the Saudi Peninsula, Jordan. And so we, we see that, um, uh, that the Valley of Megiddo is this place where the Antichrist armies uh, are, are, are assembled. And this is where the great conflict happens between the king of the east, the, the, this Chinese army, and all opposing forces will come against them there to destroy them. And uh, so I don't know how, we all don't know how all the pieces fit. We don't know who the king of the north is and the king of the south is. We don't know where the United States is. Frankly, the U.S. Uh, in Ezekiel 38 joins, or the Saudi Peninsula nations join with the U.S. to come against uh, uh, Turkey, Iran, Russia, and Northern Africa. 
and but we don't know where they end up settling. We know that Antichrist will have uh, a both a Middle Eastern, but more importantly, a European uh, set of nations that are a part of it. And so, because we don't know um, all of the pieces, we just know some of the pieces. I don't know where the U.S. will fall. Naturally, we, we're we're seeing now that we're greatly divided. Um, and we need to continue to pray for our nation um, as things begin to continue to slip uh, away in, in, in denominations and religions around. Christianity is changing. It's evolving. There's a separation between those that, are, uh, that, are, that stick to the word of God and believe that God can write a book and that his word is true and those that are Christians and label only. We're seeing a separation in our nation in politics where half of the country wants to go the way of our, our Saturday message, the great harlot, uh, which, which is a one world government. And, and so this is all up in the air. And the greatest thing we can have is knowledge, right? And that's why we're teaching this. We teach every Saturday on this uh, and uh, an end time. So we invite you to join us and become a part of our teaching. Uh, we do this every Monday. I try to it's headlines, it's news, but it, more importantly, it's teaching. You know, what is, here's what's in the headlines, right? China is now an adversary of the world. And the world eventually, when COVID is over, uh, the free world will come against her somehow, some way. But the playing field has changed. Uh, everyone was trying to accommodate China before, and today they're an enemy, and, uh, and, and rightfully so. And so as we continue to watch this, knowledge is key. I ask you to join with us, uh, become a member on our website. It's free. All we need is your name and email address. You'll get notes to all of our teaching, access to all of our curriculums, and members pluses, which are those that support us, will also get some other proprietary information like Zoom calls and, and where you can ask questions in this format. Anyway, God bless you guys. May God's face shine upon you. And I pray great blessings upon you until next week. Uh, be blessed. Thanks.